Hey guys, so in this video, I'll teach you how to trade using supply and demand zones. So just to define first, a demand zone is basically a zone where we have strong bullish momentum or we have very strong aggressive bias in that market, for instance here. Then a supply zone is just the opposite. So at supply, we have very strong sellers or aggressive sellers or we have strong selling pressure at that particular point. So in the forex market, we have different groups of people and one of them is the retail traders like you and me. Then we have the big banks or the smart money as some people might call them. So the big banks are the ones who have the, you know, the capacity to move the market with these large volumes. But as a retail trader, um, there's very little contribution that you have, you know, in regards to where price is going to move. So for instance, if you look at this particular point that I'm, I've marked here, you will realize that the market was actually selling. But if you compare the selling pressure here and the selling pressure at this particular point, you see there's a very big difference. Same thing with this particular point. The market was buying with very small candlesticks here. Then at this point, we have the market buying with very you know huge momentum. So there's a difference because at this point, we call it a demand zone because we have that strong demand for price to be pushed higher. Well, at this point, it's the retail traders who are struggling to, you know, push price. So the importance of understanding the supply and demand zone is very simple. If you find your trade at a demand zone, for instance, if you find a bullish trade at this point, higher chances are that you're going to get into the trade at the same time with the smart money are buying. So you'll experience quick momentum and most likely hit your take profit and even have a very good reward. Same thing if you are selling at a supply zone. But if you are trying to take your sell at a point where we have very little momentum, your trade, you know, will most likely not move very well. That's why it's important to understand supply and demand zones. So how do you identify a demand zone? So whenever we have a series of long bodied candlesticks, for instance, you see here we had a very long body candlestick, which shows that we have strong buyers in this market. Then we have a continuous series of um, bullish candlesticks. That's an indication that um, this is a zone of strong buying pressure. So what you want to do is that you want to mark this zone. So you want to mark this zone from where um, the buying pressure started to where this breakout candlestick ends. So in short, you want to draw a rectangle where this candlestick ends here above and where the candlestick started here below and extend it to the right. So that becomes your demands and very simple. So any time that price will trade back to this zone, we are expecting to see price, you know, to continue pushing back up because it's a zone of strong demand. So now let's see how you identify supply. So supply is quite the opposite. So in this case, the market should be dropping. So we are looking for a market that is bearish and we want to look for a zone that we have strong selling pressure. So for instance, you can see here the market is in a downtrend. We are forming, you know, lower highs and lower lows. So at this point, you can see that the market dropped quite significantly from this point all the way below here, the market was dropping. So when the market is now retracing back from this low and the market is now retracing, you want to mark your supply zone so that you can know um, a point that the market is most likely to, you know, continue selling. So the same concept applies. In this case, so you'll see that the market was dropping here. So you want to go and look at the point where the drop started and the drop started, of course, with this candlestick. So I'll mark the high and low of this candlestick and draw a rectangle, you know, and drag it to the right. So this is the candlestick that we are talking about, the breakout bearish candlestick where the drop started. So I'll mark from the highest point to the lowest point of this candlestick, which is somewhere below here and extend it to the right. So that becomes our sub supply zone, meaning any time that price will trade back to this point, we will be anticipating to possibly get strong selling pressure in the market. So now let's see how you actually apply this concept and find your entries using demand and supply. So starting with supply, finding a trade using supply zone. So we already know that we are looking for a bearish trade. First, I'll advise you trade only a market that is in a clear downtrend if you are looking for a bearish trade especially if you are practicing this concept for the first time, only trade a market that is in a very clear downtrend 
then in the downtrend you want to look for you know the impulse move and the retracement so for instance we all know from this point to here the market dropped that's an impulse move then it retraced then it dropped further that's another impulse move then here we are having a retracement so based on this impulse move from this high to this low here below we want to go and identify the supply zone and remember we want to look at where the drop started so you can come and mark where this impulse move started which it started here so you can mark at that high and remember we are marking this breakout candlestick so you are marking the top of the breakout candlestick and the bottom until the shadow if possible so and then you drag it all the way to the right so that becomes a supply zone so the next time that price will set back to this zone we'll be looking to find possibly a bearish thread so that doesn't mean that when price gets here you just sell so there are two ways that you can find your trade the first way is that you can have your pending order this zone but that's a very risky way which i don't advise the best way is for you to wait for price to get to this point then get a confirmation uh in this case if you check carefully we had a very good bearish pattern when price got here you see we had this small pattern here price went down it looks like a very very small head and shoulder so you must also be very conversant with patterns for you to identify such things that's the pattern that we had so that acts as our confirmation that price is now bearish so the first thing is you wait for price to trade back to the supply zone second thing is you wait for confirmation because there are times that price can get here and it breaks very strongly so if you are trading based on a pending order your pending order might get triggered and you also hit stop loss and the zone gets broken you know so after getting confirmation with this long candlestick which has confirmed our pattern you can now come and find your bearish trade at this point have your stop loss somewhere above that candlestick if you want to be very safe you can have your, your stop loss above that high then depending with your risk reward you can now find your trade that's the first example of trading using supplies so i'll just show you why it's important for you to wait for a confirmation pattern because in this second example if you check carefully we had a supply zone because price dropped all the way to this low so we go back to where this uh you know momentum started to this breakout candlestick here we extend to the right that becomes our supply zone so if you are trading with a pending order you see price got here and it triggered your order and price went up further let's just mark and see price traded up with a further 92 pips that's actually enough to wipe out your stop loss that's why it's very important to wait for confirmation but if you trade with confirmation this is how you are going to approach this trade you wait to see how price will react at this point and if you were patient enough you realize that this price closed with a very strong rejection um week at the top which shows us that you know buyers have been rejected here and as if that's not enough the next candlestick was a bearish engulfing let me mark it the next candlestick was a bearish engulfing which indicates that now you know price is very bearish this is the engulfing candlestick so we have um we've combined different things before getting our trade number one is the trend direction is bearish number two we identify the supply zone number three when price gets there we want to first monitor the reaction then we get first confirmation which is um rejection second confirmation which is an engulfing so at this point you can now get into your short position after the engulfing has been formed have your stop loss somewhere above that candlestick which is 53 pips then depending on the risk reward you can have your trade which dropped all the way to over 300 pips that's it you know trading supply um finding a bearish trade next example is finding a bullish trade same concept make sure you are trading a market that has very clear direction for instance this is zero and you can see on the one hour time frame the direction is very um clear it's a very strong um bullish trend so you are very sure that the market is going up so what you want to be looking for is just marking your demand zones and waiting for price to retrace to these zones then you can get into your position so i'm going to use um an example at this point price moved you know higher 
instantly as you can see price go to this point then we had some dejection and then we had bullish candlestick and a further series of you know continuation of a bullish candlestick so as i said you want to come and mark where this momentum started so this is the bullish momentum candlestick so i'm going to mark the highest point of that candlestick and the lowest point of that candlestick drag it to the right that becomes our demand zone so in future when price will be retracing to this point we'll be expecting um the price to continue buying so as you can see when price go to this point we had a very clear pattern let me just mark it for clarity as i told you wait for confirmation so here we had a very clear pattern some form of you know three four candlesticks which were quite undecided and then what happened next is that we had a breakout candlestick so this breakout candlestick acts as a confirmation so at this point you can now come and get into your long position after the candlestick has closed stop loss above that candlestick which is about 40 pips if you want to be very safe you can place it below that zone as long as you're comfortable with your risk reward so stop loss above i mean below that candlestick take profit somewhere above and that's how you hit you know your profit trading um using demand so i'll use a final example at this point you can see price was very strongly bullish here we had a very strong bullish a momentum candlestick so we want to go and see where did this bullish momentum start it started here below this candlestick so this candlestick where the momentum started you want to mark above the candlestick and below draw a rectangle extend it to the right that becomes our demand zone same thing you want to wait for price to come at this point and form a very clear bullish pattern you want confirmation as i've told you i advise that you don't trade using pending orders because it's very risky you might be lucky and price will get here and reverse or price might easily break or even you know come and spike below and form a fake out then it comes and reverses and goes your side eventually so you want to wait for confirmation and if you check carefully here we had a series of small candlesticks which i can mark a series of small candlesticks here and then what followed next was a breakout candlestick let me mark that for clarity so we had a series of one two three four about six seven small candlesticks and then we had this breakout candlestick which is a bullish candlestick so that now acts as our confirmation so at this point again you can come and get into your long position as i've said there put your stop loss either below the candlestick and, and as i told you if you want to be very safe put it somewhere here below which will be about 63 pips as long as you're comfortable with what you are risking to the reward you're looking for then you see price did a haul over 290 pips so basically that's how you trade using supply and demand um my advice is that you need to do a lot of practice before this concept you know you can grasp it very well but when you grasp it, it becomes very easy for you to spot. Also, I'll advise that you combine this with other tools of technical analysis. Don't just, you know, open your chart and depend totally on supply and demand because you have to combine it with higher time frame analysis. And the best way to fully trade supply and demand is mark the supply and demand zones using the higher time frames if possible. Then on the lower time frame, you'll just be waiting for price to get there. Then when it forms a pattern, you can now jump into your trade. That's it for this video.